Hi, welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. I actually went and picked up a mobile order this morning. First time ever from the Starbucks down the street. My sister ordered it and uh, I haven't ever had a Starbucks down the street. So that was pretty exciting. So I have a fresh Starbucks as we're entering into the Sunday morning coffee. Ooh, so much has unfolded this last week. It was back to school here. I know many of you have already had your kiddos back to school in August, but we start after Labor Day typically, and my youngest is in high school, and there was a whole lot of stuff going on with that. And so today I want to talk about how not I thought about this a lot I thought do I want to talk about how things don't go as planned because they don't but I think what I want to talk about is the unexpected so for those of you who like to journal and who appreciate the power of words let's use the word unexpected and let's talk about it a bit in the frame or context of energy So oftentimes we move through the world and have expectations and others have expectations as well. So there are shared expectations like common standards of things like how we wait in line, how we treat the barista at Starbucks. Okay, okay. For the most part, we have common expectations or shared expectations about all sorts of different things. There are rules that help us, structures in place that we all agree to or a set of guidelines that some might consider expectations for behavior, for code of conduct, for a standard that we live by. And for some, it gets really deep and very serious when you go into the realm of values or beliefs. But what I'm more talking about here today in the unexpected is how we have become a world of incredibly overwhelmed, heart-based, empathic people, and how that has caused us to worry, to amplify the energy of worry, to create a constant state of stress and pressure, not only externally in the environment, with a shared common interest of stress and pressure, sense of urgency, but within ourselves, which has caused so much disease, ailments, health problems, and all sorts of things that are very uncomfortable at the least and life-threatening at the worst. Now, you can relate to this because you're feeling some type of pressure in your life right now. So what we do is we allow the brain, the mind, to step in and to big brother its way into our lives to help create a set of expectations, a set of guidelines to how we will live or how we perceive and then think about process the information the world is giving to us based upon other people's behaviors and the experiences and the scenarios that we encounter. So when we come across something unexpected, it doesn't just challenge us, it freaks us out. It takes us off our center, it takes us out of alignment, it ungrounds us. That false sense of stability that we've created from a common set of expectations is really just that, temporary in its nature. And so the mind will leverage this awareness by implementing higher stress standards. Fear-based scenarios will come into the thoughts of the mind in order to be able to then impact and influence the body through stress, through worry, through a constant state of remembering what maybe has happened that one time 20 years ago 
over and over and over and over and over and snowballing it again to have that old past scenario kind of be influencing you here today now as the grown adult that you are, you know exactly what I mean here. You can feel that even when I say it, can't you? You can feel that energy of those expectations and the mind using it as a tool to control, to manage, and truly to manipulate. This is what they mean by ego. This is what they mean by in personal development and and in all sorts of the self-help genres. Working with the mind creates challenge because it needs to control, because it needs to keep you safe. It's that survival mechanism, right? So you don't get eaten by the bear. It's that old instinctive primal energy. But the primal energy in and of itself is not bad at all. It is not a villain or the evil monster. The primal energy is amazing and awesome. It is what gives you productivity. It's what brings you passion. It's what makes you interesting and creative and fantastic as a person. That energy is great. But the mind misuses it. And a And when it combines it with the memories of stressors, of stress and challenge and and failures and difficulties, it becomes a a larger-than-life sort of experience or potential catastrophe. And so expectations or the need to control your environment or people around you, which is a natural human thing that happens causes us to make decisions based upon fear of what could or might happen in the worst case scenarios. We are triaging because we are empathic beings. We are very sensitive because we have lived so long in a high stress environment. Everyone collectively feels this. Everybody, everybody. Some people just handle the stressors and the tenseness in their bodies better, or they seem or appear to, but really in their private time, they're not because they may be using tools or, or vices. They may be in addiction. They may be using even exercise or food or alcohol or substances to help to control or manage that intense tightness, tenseness, fear, just incredible compounding energy of that churning of stress. We all have it. And some people actually, if you know anything about the attachment theories, they actually detach from it. They get numb. If they can't actually numb out the feelings of stress and worry and pressure, they can numb their body or disconnect, disassociate the body from experiencing those feelings. The mind still has it. The mind still goes a million miles an hour, like that hamster wheel, right? And the heart sometimes feels emotions randomly that are so misplaced and misguided because the body is disconnected energetically, I know this well, because when I get to the point where I am so overwhelmed or overloaded, and I actually can't really feel much, I kind of feel numb in my body, I know it's a problem. It's a huge red flag for me. Massive. Actually, it's more than a red flag. It's the, the ship is going down. The ship is going down. Because it is extraordinarily important extraordinarily important for you to leverage all the resources that you have been given in the basics of who you are. The core of who you are is a mind, a heart, a soul, and a body. Now, the body is not the enemy. You've heard me say that over and over and over again. In this realm of expectations or unexpected, the body processes and holds fear because it tries to protect you from the antics of the brain that ignite the old patterns of fear. It brings to life all of these potential imaginative 
projected worst case scenarios that you start to plan for in your mind and feel in your body because your body processes the things you think about as though they've happened or are happening. You are experiencing that energy of that and the body holds the energy. Your body is so incredibly empathic. It feels everything. This is why your low back gets tight when you get worried about something or your neck hurts when you get nervous about something. Or for me, the right side of my upper hip starts to pull back on me and get sore when I'm worried about my family or my kids or something that has happened in the past is coming back up in relation to my relationships. There's actually a book that for some of you who have experienced major trauma in your life, which basically everybody has, because did you know that prolonged stress is considered trauma? I know the word trauma is, it's kind of hard to like really embrace that as a, uh, as a, as a word that, that also means just long-term to prolong stress, which applies to everyone, literally, because we're so used to like the trauma unit in the old old school television shows, the trauma unit, it's the worst case scenarios, everything's happening all the time. Well, guess what, people, that's exactly how our bodies feel since COVID. And since the political turmoil of the world has been impacting the United States, and perhaps the country that you're listening from as well, and you just can't believe what's happening, and it just feels so out of control and unmanageable. That is because we've tried to navigate things with expectations or a common, agreed upon, unspoken set of norms in society. And the truth is we're such unique people and such unique spirits and energy that it's really hard to find those common, that common ground, but it does exist. So you are a body a mind, a heart, and a soul. So there's four aspects to you, just like everybody else. So you can fully expect that if you are feeling really out of sorts, out of alignment, not connected, or you're reaching for one of those vices, like binging on that bag of potato chips instead of just having a few, you're having the whole bag, or you're having a few too many glasses of wine over and over and over again each night, you can bet that your body is gonna start yelling at you and telling you that it does not expect this. This is unexpected. This isn't something the body is prepared to process. And what you're asking it to do is beyond its means. So it will respond in ways that you don't expect, in unexpected ways. So this is why... This is why they say you do, I mean, stress makes you sick. It does. I know for a fact. And I want you to be able to leverage working with energy and the energetics of yourself to help support different ways, different perspectives to move through this life that aren't just old habits or auto responses for you. We want to mess with the mind in a good way. We want to challenge it in a healthy way. We don't want to simply repeat the old patterns of fear to control. We don't want to project out into the future. We don't have control there either. We don't need 15 worst case scenario plans. We don't need that. And I am so bad at this myself, especially when it comes to like my kids or people I love. So let's talk about the unexpected, the concept of unexpected, not as something that's stressful or challenging, but what about when the unexpected is something that is inspiring and insightful, because that happens too. This is spontaneous. This is surprising. Some of the best things in life you can't plan for. This is why they're calling it popping the question. I was, I'm reminded of a good, 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 good friend of mine whose daughter is pregnant for the first time. It'll be her first grandchild. And she's so, so over the moon, excited. And 
Um, she messaged me to tell me she was just so excited when they when she heard the news and that unexpected news is so heartwarming and it doesn't directly happen to me or affect me or my family but I am just so it just made me so happy so we can share in this energy and amplify the goodness the happiness, the joy, the shared joy, just like we've been sharing suffering and pain and challenge. We can share as equally and more powerfully and profoundly joy. Ever sit someplace and watch a kid? Like when they have to sit and maybe watch something like a movie or a play and it's not really interesting to them. Like, it's, we're not talking Little Mermaid here. We're talking like something else, right? Or they're sitting in church. And they are just so keeping themselves entertained, right? And in keeping themselves entertained, they might be turning around and smiling at you or handing you things or asking for things for their mom. They're, they're very social. They're entertaining themselves. And you're watching them. And you're probably giggling or laughing, even though the parents might be a little frustrated with the child's antsiness, that extra energy. You can appreciate it as the adult in the, the chair behind, right? You can appreciate it. It's not a distraction. It's a welcome, unexpected opportunity to smile and to feel joy and just the simple pleasure of a child and the way that they move through the world and experience things, and the way that they reach out to people or see people or keep themselves occupied with the subtle things, like maybe they're playing with the bracelet, for example. It's so, so simple. It doesn't have to be this massive major undertaking to create an unexpected opportunity or moment. It just happens. It could be as simple as a smile at the grocery store or finding a dime on the street. <laughs> I love to do that. It always makes me so happy when I find change. Partly too, because you know what they say about pennies and dimes. It's the angels or your loved ones or your spirit guides saying hello. So you see, unexpected things can bring you so much pleasure in such simple ways. And that's really what I want you to feel into when you think about the unexpected. And we spent a lot of time talking about what we can, you and I can relate to with the stressors and pressures of life right now. So it will be potentially a, a, a big invitation <laughs> for you to accept to open your heart, open your mind, open your body up to unexpected things. When I say that, I think about the unexpected discovery of boxing for me and fitness. Like, I don't do it all the time, you guys. I don't want you to get this impression that all of a sudden I'm super muscular and really strong. I'm not. I'm not. I just go once a week. But I really just enjoy the feeling and the energy and the atmosphere. It just And it's unexpected. I went just with an open heart and an open mind to say, hey, well, I'll see what happens. See what happens here. And I love it. So there might be something unexpected that you could participate in. It might be as simple as a new book to read that you don't usually read that genre and you did and it's great or music or a concert or a movie or a new walk. Maybe you discover a new park or maybe you walk a different way around your neighborhood and you see the cutest little dog. Oh my gosh, a cute little puppy dog. You know, those little wiggle butts like that. Now, come on, that made you smile, didn't it? Because you thought of a dog or something, right? You thought of something cute. See, this is what I mean. Unexpected. These moments we can amplify and we can expand together all of our heart space. Thank you so much for being here on Sunday Morning Coffee. I do, I do appreciate you every week. 
I hope to do live streams eventually, but my work schedule has changed. So actually I'm working at the community center today. A lot of Sundays I have kind of scheduled, so it makes it a little bit tricky. I just have to get up a little bit earlier, <laughs> maybe on a Sunday. But I will see you tomorrow for um, our channeling on Monday. Um, this week I'm thinking, I actually do have a client session in the morning, so I'm not 100% sure what time I'll get to the channeling, but I will do it live stream on Monday. All right. And if you're interested, I still have room in my Tuesday, the 12th of September at 6 p.m. Central Time, Inspiring Psychic Experience Group. So you can join that. It's about an hour. And I'll do um, a little bit of channeling. We'll connect with some spirit guides or angels. We'll give you some little inspiring pep pep talk type vibes. And then we will also do question and answer like old school. Like you can ask me all sorts of stuff. You can ask me about your relationships, you can ask about um, your career, you can ask about your kids, whatever you want, um, and then we'll do some psychic work together. So how awesome is that? And you can do that, and it's a group experience, and it's a super affordable to do some psychic work that way. You can find the link to that Inspiring Psychic Experience group, again, this month in September. It's on September 12th at 6 p.m. Central. And you can find that in the description here below. Thanks so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit, filled you with hope, and encouraged you to live your life, as always. This is your life, after all. And you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.